Hey guys, welcome to Urban Unplugged. This is a brand new YouTube channel, and this is our first episode, and my name is Brian. I love getting up early in the morning. Uh, I'm definitely a morning person, and having breakfast and watching the sunrise. It was a beautiful day, and that was a really delicious breakfast. Uh, today's episode, and we're gonna talk about electric cars. Um, now, every episode is gonna have some kind of life hack. And when I say life hack, I don't mean like some interesting way to do something different with material than or a, a item than you did before when i'm talking about hacks i'm talking about an acronym which is h-a-c-s and that's something that is healthy affordable clean for the environment and is simple to do you know one thing that we do on this channel is anytime we um we do a hack uh we always we always do a lot of research and we try to figure out what's the best way to do it because um, there are ways that you can use an electric vehicle that, is, that really isn't that clean. If you live in a state that, you know, or a city that 99% of your power comes from coal, that may not be the best thing to do. Now, it's not to say you could put solar panels up in your house and charge a vehicle with solar panels, but that's one extra step you got to consider and then cost becomes a bit of an issue. So um, anytime we, uh, we do these hacks, we always evaluate those. And we're going to show you in this show um, what we came up with. Um, and our electric cars, we actually have two of them. We always joke that uh, we liked our first electric car so much we bought another uh, one and it is exactly the same car. They're both pretty much identical. But right now, I gotta go get my workout in. So I'll talk to you later. Off to the gym to play some racquetball. So today's a pretty special day, not just because it's the first day we're doing a video blog on this channel, it's also my anniversary. I have been married to a beautiful girl that you're gonna meet later in this episode named Danielle for 23 years and uh, we're gonna do some fun stuff this afternoon in downtown Portland um, kind of go explore the city for our anniversary and you guys get to see a little bit of that but I was thinking on the way to the gym I should probably get a card so I'm gonna get a card oh by the way since we're talking about electric vehicles one of the best benefits of an electric vehicle is the parking spot let me show you I think one of my favorite things about shopping at Walmart is you just see something weird every time. Uh, there's a guy here who I think bought a hitch and he's installing it in the parking lot. Um, he's got his electric drill uh, hooked up to an extension cord that's going across the parking lot, plugged into an outlet on the outside of Walmart. So we thought, what better way to show you the benefits of electric vehicle than take you on our date night with us. Uh, we're going to head into downtown, going on a hike, going on a picnic. Should be a really good time. So we're going to Why do... is this a special date? We already said it's our anniversary. Yeah. Our 23rd anniversary. We got married when we were 10. Yes. I'm 33. All right, here we go. about this electric car, electric cars in general. Um, kind of give me an idea of why we made the switch, why we bought two of the same cars. Should I go first? You probably should. Okay, we'll go back and forth. It's I'll your do one. Child. I'll do one, then you do one. Does that sound are good? Are they in order? These are not, I'm not that organized. I'm not putting these in order of which one's the best to the worst because it's just as I'm thinking of. My number one is money. You just, and I know, and this is funny because a lot of people think of electric cars as being very expensive, like Teslas or, you know, $80,000, $90,000 cars. But um, that's, and, and yes, they are, there's a lot of them on the road uh, as far as electric cars go, but for the most part, there's a lot of other 
other brands. You've got Chevy's got two electric cars, the Chevy Spark, the Chevy Bolt. Uh, you've got the Nissan Leaf. Uh, you've got the Golf, which is the Volkswagen electric. I think Honda is now coming out. We saw that as uh, the Civic. No, it's not the Civic. I can't remember what it is. It's about the size of an Accord. Um, they also have a Honda Fit that's now electric too. So uh, you got a lot of options. And this car, we paid, uh, I think, 13,000 for your car with about 10,000 miles on it, and we paid 10,000 for this car with 20,000 miles on it. So it's dirt cheap. And when you look at how much it costs to operate them, um, that's crazy cheap. I was doing the math the other day. Uh, I drive 65 miles round trip to get to work. And so that's about, it takes about 13 kilowatts, about five miles per kilowatt. Uh, that cost me a total of 50 some cents to charge. I used to ride the train to work and that alone, even if you bought a month long pass, is gonna be like four bucks a day. So when you think about driving a vehicle that is one eighth the cost of mass transit, that's, that's pretty cheap. That I don't have to go to the gas station. Ooh, that was one of mine. That's a good one. Oh, you took it. Yes. Well, yeah. I know how much you love waiting for an attendant in Oregon to put gas in your car. Oh. That's your favorite thing. That is the worst. See, and I don't, I don't think many people know that. Well, if you don't live in Oregon, you probably don't experience this quite as bad. But in Oregon, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. And they, you're right. They will yell at you. They'll be like, "I'm gonna call the cops. You're pumping gas." Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> That's a good, well, that's a good number two. If you've never driven an electric car, the driving experience is fantastic. In a couple of ways. How would you say it's fantastic? Good, good, good question. Number one, listen to how quiet the engine is. Yes, I do like how quiet it's, it is. It's very quiet. Uh, and two, I... That took some getting used to. I thought that something was wrong or that the car hadn't yeah. actually started. Yeah, it does. You're for a while, you're just like, is it going? Yeah. Like I said, I commute every day, so I like to listen to podcasts, I like to listen to music. I don't really want a lot of other noise. Um, the other part of the experience that I like is, and I don't really know how to describe this, but somehow after you've driven an electric car for maybe a month or two, and you get behind another vehicle, or you're stuck in traffic behind a whole bunch of other vehicles, you get fixated on their tailpipe, and you're like, these people are pushing toxins yes. into the environment. It is kind of creepy. And uh, and I know that you know some people make the argument that um, that somehow electric vehicles are less environmentally friendly than uh, gas vehicles. Because of the battery disposal. Well, that you have the battery. This is true. Um, lithium can be disposed of but it's difficult and lithium mining is not the cleanest thing. Or they'll say, well, you know, if you get your electricity um, from a coal burning plant, then, you know, that's worse. And, and that's true. If you, if all you did was get your electricity from a coal burning plant, that would be really bad. Where we live in the state of Oregon, we have almost no coal. In fact, there's a very, very small percentage. Uh, plus we get a lot of our electricity at our house from the sun. Uh, Portland General Electric gets most of their electricity from uh, hydroelectric, the dams, solar, and wind. Um, and even though they do get a little bit from coal, they're actually shutting that down in 2020. So that's going away. So I would imagine in West Virginia, that's probably the case that it's not the safe, you know, the best thing, but that doesn't mean that you can't produce your own energy. Anyway, so watching other cars and thinking, wow, I'm getting to work just like this other person is, but I'm not adding anything to the environment. Okay, you've actually just done two things. Was that two? You did the comfort, uh, yeah. and you did the environmentally friendly. Oh boy. I'm going to say size for around town. It's fantastic. We live in a very uh, urban and, what's, what's the other thing? It's densely populated. Densely populated. We go downtown Portland a good amount, and to be able to just sneak into little places is really convenient. Yep. Also in traffic too. I mean, like you can change lanes anytime you want because nobody can like really not give you enough room to get you because you're so small. Yeah, yeah that, size yeah, is a big one. That's more you. I tend to kind of oh. stay in one lane and 
Okay. Just pick a lane. So I would say the uh, maintenance. Ooh, that's a good one. We don't have to change the oil, although the uh -huh. tires are not the least expensive. For but this. okay, but four hundred twenty dollars for a set of tires isn't crazy. No, it's not crazy money. Now yeah. we have taken the car to the shop twice. Your car, right? Correct. Because um, I installed the backup camera wrong. That was my fault. Um, so that really and then wasn't there a maintenance was a issue. Software issue the thing oh, there was a software issue. So I guess three times. That was it. And then there was the brakes. But which, <laughs> which I thought the brakes were feeling grabby, like they weren't transitioning the way they usually did, and. Um, I take it in, and the mechanic who only works on EVs says they're the smoothest brakes he's ever driven. The best brakes I've said, ever tried. Well, said. at least I came in and documented that I thought something was wrong. So if something goes wrong, then you know. I'm gonna go back to driving experience because that was a broad category more than just one thing. And the acceleration yes. on these cars is stupid. Good. It's well, even crazy. when you don't have it in sport mode, you're kind of silly to be in Long sport curves. mode if you can't control your. It's like, oh my gosh! See, like yeah, that, I just like, like that. that. <laughs> so, it's now the. Of course, you can't do that for very long because you blow through. Well, there's the downside. You will you will burn up your battery quickly if you do that. If you're not driving conservatively, but there is something I don't know. Just. Really, there's like maybe a cool factor to the fact that you can sit at a light and somebody pulls up in a Camaro or a Corvette and you blow the doors off of them in yes. a little spark and they cannot figure out why. It is a adventurous experience yes. if you want to drive it any distance. Yes. You get to do a lot of math and planning and crossing your fingers charging station that the app says is there is it's actually, actually there. there. <laughs> or that actually works um, and is not just a wall plug that will take two days. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's, you have to choose it to be an adventure and there's been times where that's not so fun. So this could be a con then, maybe. Yeah. yeah. This, is probably, this is gonna show up on our cons list, I can tell, yeah. I can tell at least that. So, but you enjoy the adventure of figuring out. Yeah, the, the one thing about the mileage and the range on the vehicles is they're very accurate. Like you can yes. pretty much, if it says you're gonna get 70 miles the way you're driving, you'll get 70 miles the way you're don't driving. Change the if, way you're if, driving. If, yeah, as long as you don't you know, crank the heater up all of a sudden or you know, punch it I, like I did. Does that. Yeah, so you, you can, the mileage is very predictable, um, but you're right sometimes the charging stations are not. We have had instances, one time uh, I was heading down to Corvallis and we had to actually switch cars because the charging station I was trying to get to wasn't there. Here's the thing, if you're gonna get an electric vehicle, just plan on, on a road trip. If you want an adventure, you're gonna get one. Yep. If you don't want an adventure, don't uh, drive it, rent a car. Rent a car, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've taken a number of trips where we just rent a car. We took a trip to California one time and I think we put close to 3,000 miles on that car. The rental was 300, I'm not sure how the gas was. It was it was a gas, it was a fuel efficient vehicle, so it was whatever you normally pay for gas. But I'm thinking to myself, you know, Why this, would I own that? Right. And I can just rent it, and if something happens, they come and give me a new car. Exactly, and, and not only that, I'm not sure if I want to spend $300 to put 3,000 miles on my car. Right. I, I almost think it might be worth it to put on somebody else's car. Yeah, it does. The seats fold down really yeah. nice and flat, so you really, because it's a hatchback, yep. you do have a decent amount of uh, cargo room in the back. Now, granted, you can only then drive with two people, but... But if you got two of them... Yeah. <laughs> then you got four.
the funny thing, and that's another that's another interesting thing about this is that it is a four seater. Um, most electric cars do have five seats, like you would expect out of a normal hatchback. This one, for whatever reason, they chose to make it a four seater. My daughter and I were at a racquetball event in Mexico um, last year, and there were sparks everywhere, but they weren't electric; they were all gas. And in Central America, they made that version of the spark. And I've never seen it in the U.S. They made it, they made it a five seater with a third middle seat. That's what I'm trying to say. People. I don't know how anybody would fit in that seat, but there were three headrests in the back, three sets of seat belts, the whole bit. So, I mean, this has got to be up there. Free parking, maybe. Oh, we get free parking all over the you place. Get the best parking ever. Sometimes, okay, like Kohl's, thank you, Kohl's. Yeah. Um, I have, and if you're listening, other businesses and competitors of Kohl's and other retailers, put put in a charging station. You will get free customers. I don't know how many shirts I bought at Kohl's because I needed to charge and I had a half hour to kill, so I went into Kohl's and shopped the discount rack. So, there you so, go. So, it's not really free. Well, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but who doesn't want a new shirt? I mean, come on. That's true. That's I mean, a good when point. we're downtown Portland at an event or something like that, it's great to find the EV parking. And even if you have to charge just a tiny bit, it's it, some of them charge you to park, but it's pennies. It's yeah, last compared week compared to any other parking. Last week, my daughter had another event, and it just happened here in Portland. Um, she plays racquetball, and uh, check her out racquetballna.com. Very good website. Anyways, uh, she plays racquetball. We had this event. It was downtown. And you have to pay for parking everywhere. The event parking was $10 a day, I think, which they thought was a deal. Um, if you park on the street, I think in the city of Portland it's $2 an hour, something, something like, that. like that. It's it's not cheap. Uh, I parked over to Freddy's that had a blank charger and I needed a charge, but even after the charge ends, uh, you know, you can be there and it'll charge you like, I wanna say it was eight cents an hour after that. I, I was there all day. And my total bill was like $1.42. It was like, it was crazy. If you're buying a new vehicle, or if you're buying a charging station, there's also a tax write-off for you. Uh, oh, a lot yeah. of people don't know this, but uh, for, it depends on the size of the vehicle, but most vehicles that you buy, you get a $7,500 tax rebate. So think about that. When you're buying, um, if you're looking at electric vehicles, you gotta weigh that out. And this is something you really think about too, buying used, because when you buy used, you don't get that rebate. That rebate's already gone. When you look at the price of a new one versus a slightly used one, automatically take 7,500 off of the price of the new one. If you want a brand new one, that's great. I found, um, like, the sticker price on this car, this is the L2 model, uh, was $29,000. Um, that's a lot of money for a car this small. The original owner, um, ended up at 22,000 because they got the rebate. Um, but even still, I, I think it was two years later and 20,000 miles later, by the time it got to me, it was only worth $10,000. So do the, do the homework, do the math, but know that if you do want a new car experience, take $7,500 off the price of the electric vehicle because um, it's gonna cost that much less than the gas vehicle. Additionally, if you get a home charger, which by the way, if you have an electric vehicle, you get should have a, a home, home charger. charger. <laughs> it's just so much faster. It's so much more convenient. It's just if nice to know. If you try to plug it in to your wall outlet, it'll take a couple of days to charge. It, it can, it's not Depending, a couple of days, but it's, well, it's, it's, for, it's it takes forever. between 12 to 18 hours. But nobody has time for that. Nobody got to me. Nobody got time for that. All right. So those are our top 10. Uh, we're going to end this right here and we'll come back later after we go on our walk with the things that we don't like about life for us. Okay. Lying awake with a sob of an emptiness you left behind Trying to sleep but the silence is haunting this room every night I can stand to feel this way My body's creeping out your name Didn't want to say goodbye to you, bye to you But you're gone
definitely carry out salt and straw. Is that just a Portland thing? No. No. Well, if you're in a place that has salt and straw, I've never been before. You may have really started good. here though. Yeah, it's really, really good. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, not so great things about EVs. We actually talked about this for a little bit when we stopped and we can't think of anything. <laughs> we really like well, EVs. nothing, the things we think of are specific to the spark that we would do differently, but that just means we would get a different EV, not that we wouldn't have an EV. Exactly. So, buyer's guide advice here if you're going to buy a uh, Chevy Spark. Yeah. Uh, some things that are not so great about the Spark. It doesn't have a light in the charge port. Drives me crazy. And I, you know, I don't know of any other, uh, I'll do a little more research on this. I don't know of any other electric vehicles that do other than the Tesla. The Tesla does have that. It's smart, every car should have it. When you come home, it's rainy night, it's dark, and you're trying to plug your car and you can't figure out how to plug it in. Yes, it should have a little light, just like when you open the trunk. It has a little light on the, the hatch and stuff like that. I can't believe something that simple you're fumbling with. Come on, Chevy, $10 fix. You can get that. Yes. Okay, uh, another problem with Spark. How many armrests? One. <laughs> the driver's side has an armrest. So the passenger, now granted, it's a tiny car. <laughs> and so it is not that far for you to lean over, but still, only one person can use the armrest at a time. So it's yeah. a little cozy. That's not so good. I would say the back seats are not the most comfortable. No, it is not a long distance car. For, in fact, for, the, my, for the back seats. The front seats are okay, but the back seats not so My much. daughter had a friend that was with us and he was what? Was he? He's probably about six foot. About six feet tall. And if we hit a bump, his head hit the, the ceiling. Room. Yeah, not a lot of headroom in the back either. But again, it's not meant for long distance driving. It's perfect for around town on a daily basis you don't need super comfy seats yeah so again you're gonna go long distance just get the rental car it's yep. really a good car i yep. mean for daily driving especially for if you commute it's a fantastic car so there you go yep we're gonna get back to doing some walking hey It was a walk. Yeah, we didn't go, no elevation, but no. Okay, right now we have an amazing feast in front of us. Uh, I'm gonna flip the camera so you can see it. Uh, Danielle has made us, walk us through it here. We got veggies. Veggies, hummus. Yes. Olives and artichokes, ra fresh raspberries. Ooh, from the farmer's market this morning. Yes, lettuce and basil, from giant basil from nice. our garden. Nice. Grilled chicken and guacamole and of course, Pitas. Gotta have pitas. Gotta love pitas. So this is probably where we're gonna close out our video. We uh, hope you learned a lot about EVs, electric vehicles, and uh, you know what? We enjoyed hope our walk. We, yeah, I hope you enjoyed our walk and spending our day with us. Um, if you have any experience with electric vehicles or want to post comments, please do that. We'd love to hear it. We're always trying to learn more about those life hacks I talked about earlier, living healthy, um, affordably. That's okay. Healthy. Living healthy, <laughs> affordably, <laughs> clean, and simple. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can watch more Urban Unplugged. But for us, we will say goodnight. Good night. Goodnight.